It's not only news, it's science breakthroughs. Tomorrow's technologies. Advanced medical techniques. It's a glimpse into the future where we discuss artificial intelligence, earth and energy, enhanced humans, future society, health and medicine, space, robots and machines. Welcome to Science Bites with Joe and Craig. Today is September 10, 2020. The first use of prosthetics goes back to the 5th Egyptian dynasty that ruled between 2750 to 2625 BC. The earliest known written reference to an artificial limb was made around 500 BC. Thousands of changes in technology changed the artificial limb over time. Now researchers have created an artificial skin that is capable of reacting to the pain just like human skin. Growing up, I loved the Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman TV series. I guess that is why I love following the advancements of prosthetics. This new research goal is to improve on prosthetics to allow for better alternatives to skin grafts and even to argument or compensate human skin for the development of realistic humanoids, or in my dream, to create a bionic person. That's not as far away as we might think, considering how quickly technology is changing. The fact that new pain sensing devices mimics the nerve pathways that connect to the receptors in our skin to our brain to replicate the human body's extremely fast feedback response is proof of how fast technology keeps advancing. This is really true. Our skin is, by the way, the largest sensory organ with complex features designed to send rapid fire warning signals when anything hurts. We sense things all of the time through our skin, but our pain response only kicks in at a certain point, like when we're touching something too hot or too sharp. No electronic technologies have been able to realistically mimic that very human feeling of pain until now. The prototype is a thin artificial skin that can sense changes in pressure, heat and cold. Once a certain threshold is reached, the skin reacts just like real human skin. It is a critical step forward to the future, developing the sophisticated feedback systems that we need to deliver truly smart prosthetics and intelligent robotics. A separate prototype is made out of even thinner, stretchable material that can respond to changes in temperature and pressure. A third one is an extremely thin coating, about 1,000 times thinner than a single human hair, that can react to changes in heat. It means this artificial skin knows the difference between gently touching a pin with a finger or accidentally stabbing yourself with it, a critical distinction that has never been achieved before electronically. So bring on the bionics. And it wasn't that many episodes ago, Joe, when we actually spoke about advancements in the artificial eye that has been making headway. Yes, that was episode 10. We talked about the artificial eye. I read a paper recently trying to enhance the eye with cameras to record what it sees. Which, that brings us to another topic. According to the leaked FBI bulletin, cops are worried that criminals are using internet-connected smart doorbells, such as Amazon Rings doorbells, to spy on law enforcement. I can see a future with eyes everywhere, Joe. Yeah, well, it's just like the sci-fi books have been predicting for generations. This is true, and as a bonus, it would be much harder to commit a crime, or so I always thought. So, will it? I don't know. Based on this FBI bulletin that reads, quote, Subjects likely use Internet of Things devices to hinder law enforcement investigations and possibly monitor law enforcement activity, end quote. The leaked document also highlights a 2017 incident in which FBI agents were recorded through a Wi-Fi connected doorbell system, notifying their target of their presence. The target even then contacted his neighbor and landlord regarding the FBI's presence there. So they were able to see and hear everything the FBI was doing at his residence. Smart doorbells and other internet connected cameras are intended to monitor neighborhoods for unusual activity. Amazon's subsidiary Ring partnered with local police departments as part of the new surveillance strategy. Unfortunately, those kinds of partnerships, in addition to crime hunting neighborhood watch apps, have already led to plenty of discrimination with advocacy groups ringing the alarm bells over a massive potential for racial profiling. There are too many smart doorbells, especially those with weak security features, making this a hacker's dream. Yeah, people change those passwords and make them harder to hack. 
use a combination of upper and lower case letters, numbers, and special characters. If the company offers two-part verification, please make sure you enable it. It just keeps everybody safer, not just you. We have time for one more bite of news before our break. I found this fascinating. For the first time, engineers built optical tweezers capable of grabbing individual biomolecules and proteins without damaging them. This is a vast improvement to our technology. Existing optical tweezers, which are devices that can trap and manipulate tiny objects using highly focused lasers, couldn't grab anything smaller than a red blood cell before. According to the research published in the journal Nature Nanotechnology, the new nano tweezers can pick up individual proteins and DNA molecules. The Vanderbilt University engineers that built them hope doctors will be able to diagnose diseases like Alzheimer's even earlier. The new nano tweezers laser traps and lifts individual objects without aiming directly at the object and damaging it with the intense light. Being able to isolate, sort, and investigate individual proteins would be exceptionally valuable to doctors studying a patient for signs of Alzheimer's disease or other neurodegenerative diseases. Because the tweezers work with small, individual molecules, doctors would theoretically be able to spot the proteins associated with Alzheimer's in earlier stages of the disease. That would be a wonderful breakthrough. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a short break. When we return, we will continue with Science News. Recycling is critically important right now. The manufacturing industry is in dire need of raw materials to make the products and shipping supplies we need during this pandemic. But it's also important to recycle right. Empty and rinse containers, break down boxes, keep cardboard and paper dry, and set them curbside for recycling. Place masks, gloves, wipes, and other protective gear in the trash. Don't litter or put these items in the recycling bin. Do your part. Recycle more and recycle Fifty years ago, we went to the moon. We called it Apollo. What many people don't know is that Apollo had a twin. She was a woman named Artemis, goddess of the moon. We are returning to the moon. As a new generation of explorers. This time to stay. And to prepare to achieve humanity's next giant leap of sending the first human missions to Mars. We believe our course will redefine what is possible. That we will discover life-saving, earth-changing science and that the challenges ahead will inspire generations. This is our manifest. For all who wondered if we could return. For all who dreamed of pressing beyond. This is your calling. We go for all of America. We go. We go as the Artemis generation. We go. Welcome back. I've been telling Craig since the early 90s, one day companies will deliver food and packages with flying machines. Well, Amazon Prime Air, the retail giant's drone delivery project, was just designated an air carrier by the Federal Aviation Administration, meaning that they can start to test drone package deliveries. This certification is an important step forward for Prime Air and indicates the FAA's confidence in Amazon's operating and safety procedures for an autonomous drone delivery service that will one day deliver packages to customers around the world, just like you said, Joe, back in the 90s. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I like it. Other companies, including Google Subsidy, Wing, and UPS, have already received their approval. It's still unclear when Amazon Prime Air will start making its delivery test flight, so please don't get too excited. In June, an Amazon spokesperson said deliveries could begin in a matter of months. Last year, the company showed off its newest drone, a transforming aircraft that can fly like a helicopter and an airplane as well. That's capable of carrying five-pound packages to customers within a 15-mile radius. The FAA is now looking to overhaul the regulatory framework to allow drones to fly over popular areas. New rules will require most drones to broadcast their identities and locations at all times. I'm sure having drones flying every which way will pose its own problems, and I'm positive some brilliant folks out there will take it into their heads to shoot them out of the air and possibly hurt or kill innocent people in the process. On the other side of things, we will probably have an office building filled with holograms to keep a visual map 
of all the drones at all times. Speaking of holograms, scientists have figured out how to make authentic hologram recordings like Ionic Star Wars. Moment when Princess Leia calls for help from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Using carefully crafted nanomaterials, Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology scientists were able to bend light in a way no natural material could accomplish. And the result? The first hologram movie of Earth spinning on its axis. This effect isn't perfect yet. The hologram itself is a bit jerky. It's just a 48-frame loop of a spinning globe that looks like the red wireframe graphics on Nintendo's Virtual Boy. But what it lacks in art, it does make up for in technology. Even though other teams have built holograms in the past, the spinning globe is vastly more sophisticated. And unlike those celebrity holograms, it can be viewed from almost any angle and it does not require any optical trickery. To break the laser down into the pattern of a globe, the nanomaterial has tiny scales that are even smaller than the wavelength of the red laser's light. Right now, it takes a long time to build that material. Researchers suggest that a six-minute hologram would take 800 hours to prepare. That still has high hopes as we keep perfecting it. 800 hours for six minutes, Joe. Yep. That's like a long time. You're not kidding. <laughs> The aim is to develop this technology to produce full color eventually. Then they want to have it viewable from any angle, whole hemisphere, in a 3D projection. In another breakthrough, a team of French scientists created an anti-gravity levitating fluid that allows a tiny boat to float on top and bottom of the fluid. It's like flipping gravity on its head. The video of this in action actually blew my mind. The team created the effect by using vibrations cycling 100 times a second. This caused the mixture of glycerol and silicon oil, which are both thicker than water, to suspend itself over a cushion of air. The team managed to levitate almost a half a quart of the liquid this way. The experiment created a far more unusual effect. Since the pocket of air underneath is denser, an object ends up by being pushed into the levitating fluid from below. It's like a delicate balance. If you want to move, let's say, a boat in the air, it will fall. And if you move it up, it'll go through the interface. The whole trick is not only to make the situation possible in the first place, but to actually stabilize the equilibrium. The team claims that their extraordinary invention could have plenty of uses, from keeping gases suspended in fluids for industrial purposes, such as in mineral processing and wastewater treatment. But as of right now, it's really not much more than a fun experiment. Cool but just an experiment. Yeah, this is a major first step in manipulating objects using vibrations like people believe the Egyptians used to build the pyramids. I wonder if they really did. You'll never know, though. We will it never know. Maybe. Okay, we're going to take a small break, and when we return, we have another bite for you. Hi, I'm David Boreanaz with a personal message for any returning vets that may be struggling to cope. There's help, and it's just a phone call away. The Veterans Crisis Line is staffed with experienced professionals who know your struggles. All of us know there's no greater sacrifice than the service to our country. Your service is important. Your life is important. For vets and their families, the Veterans Crisis Line is here to help 24 hours a day. Please call. What makes a rainbow bend? Where does the universe end? To know the world from A to Z. Discover science and where is the dinosaur? What's on the ocean floor? To know the world from A to Z. Astronomy, biology, chemistry, zoology, science and technology. It's fun, you see. Why is the sun so warm? What makes a winter storm? And what's a quadruped? Why is the planet Mars red? You'll find there's lots to know. Exploring as you go to know the world from A to Z. Discover science and technology. Astronomy, biology, chemistry, zoology. Science and technology. It's fun, you'll see. A public service message from the National Science Foundation. Welcome back. Scientists recently found a new victim of climate change and pollution, the black mouth cat shark that had its teeth, skin, and other features dissolved away from swimming contaminated water. This is so sad. It's the first time that scientists have seen such extensive environmental damage to a shark. The team of scientists aren't exactly sure what caused the degradation. 
It could have been climate change related, ocean acidification, chemical pollution, or both. But it's a stark reminder of the destruction that human activity is having on the delicate ocean ecosystem. The shark was caught by commercial fishermen and was promptly turned over to the scientists for study. The team expected that such extensive damage to the shark skin and teeth would be fatal, but they did find 14 different sea creatures inside its stomach. That suggested that the shark was still able to hunt and swallow prey whole since its teeth had dissolved entirely away. The shark is the first known to scientists with extreme levels of skin and tooth damage. Scientists have long known that the ocean acidification was hurting shark populations. In fact, previous research found that spending just nine weeks in acidic water ate away 9% of a shark's denticles. Those are the tiny scales that lined their bodies and reminds me of our episode when we talked about the teeth denticles on whale sharks. That brings us to the close of another show. You can find our shows on our website, MySciencebite.com, and on all podcast platforms. We appreciate your continued support. Joe and I have added a feedback email to our podcast description, so why not drop us a line of some feedback so we know what you like and what you might like to see on our show. Thanks again for listening, and we will be back next week with another new episode. (music) 